Welcome to A Voice for Creators. I'm your host, Daniel Norton. This week, we're going to actually address a question I got on the Discord. If you haven't joined my Discord server yet, check the show notes. There's a link there so you can join up. And I have a section, A Voice Topic Suggestion. So if you'd like to hear something on the show, go ahead and go there and make a comment. This is from Nick. So Nick, actually, it's it's, it's kind of long. <laughs> um, but basically, he's got a couple of different questions here. One of them has to do with, uh, he starts off by saying, is it what's good enough? Or is there a good enough? And he talks a little bit about changing your mind uh, during the shoot or during the editing process. Also about shooting things or doing things that are outside the norm of what you want to get hired for and if you should show that work and is it disruptive and stuff like that. So we'll, we'll break it down into a few things. So let me handle the first question first. Is there ever a good enough? And what if you change your mind while you're shooting or editing? Well, this really comes down to what you're doing, right? If I am shooting a project, I need to get a certain result. So what I've found works well on commercial projects is to get the job done first, the way it was designed or described, and then shoot extra if you have time. And this has gained me extra pages in magazines. It's gained me covers. It's gained me advertising uh, money from a catalog on many occasions. In fact, one catalog I used to shoot a lot, it became a regular thing where I would shoot extra shots that I just thought were cool. They were outside the norm of the catalog and they would almost always put them on the cover, which then got me extra money. So, and they'd use them for the advertisement, I should say, and it always got me extra money. So basically what we get here is this idea of we've got a project, we go into it. Now, there's different ways of shooting. So let me just kind of start by saying that sometimes you just take your camera and a subject and you shoot. I do this quite a bit, actually. I find that it's very refreshing to go out there without a plan because that can be exciting. And it's also a skill that's useful to have if you are an editorial photographer, which I did for many years. One of the things that used to happen uh, was, you know, you'd go to photograph a subject and you went to the you went to the spot for the very first time. You didn't know exactly how much time you'd, they'd have. Sometimes you didn't know what they looked like. And nowadays, obviously, you can check online, LinkedIn, whatever. You're going to get an idea. But sometimes you just had a general vibe of what they look like. You really didn't know what they'd be wearing, where they'd be, what, what was available. So you had to kind of work on your feet. And then, of course, when I was shot a lot from modeling agencies, that would be the way as well. They'd bring these models in that I'd never seen before, didn't know what kind of clothes they had if I didn't provide them, if there was a stylist from the agency, or sometimes they'd have girls bring their own clothes if they were really new. So you learn to work quickly and make changes. But that's a little different than you have a plan and you're like, I'm going to go to the beach and I'm going to shoot this dress at sunset with flash and use gels or a long exposure or whatever. And you go out there and you say, then you get there and you go, you know what? Instead, I'm going to wait till it's dark and shoot this because I want to do something different. Well, I wouldn't necessarily stop what you were doing, right? I would do the first thing because you're there, right? Do what you got to do, get the shot done, then stay for extra shots. Or if you had an idea, you know what? Let's shoot it while the sun's high in the sky. Go there early and do that, but still keep your original idea if it's something that you planned because while spontaneous stuff can often be the best stuff, it's good to get into the habit of completing projects as designed, even when they're for yourself, because that's what you're going to need to do when you're working commercially. It seems like Nick does work commercially, so he probably understands that. Now, as far as changing the vibe in editing, whew, this is something I don't really do very much. In fact, I've talked about this before in various videos and things where if I'm planning on shooting something in black and white, I shoot it in black and white, even though obviously digital can be changed to grayscale at any point, right? It used to be you'd have to load black and white film, although you could convert a, a scan, obviously, to digital, a digital scan rather than black and white. But the idea would be that you, if you thought you'd want it in black and white, that's the way you'd shoot it. And sometimes you'd shoot both, of course, but you were shooting some images in black and white. And this actually especially for digital is great because we can set our cameras to be shooting black and white for the JPEG, right? And then we'll see it in black and white. And being able to see it in black and white with digital is so good. When you were shooting film, obviously you don't see in black and white. So you had to really, really think about what it was going to look like. So anyways, my point being is that something like that, I generally don't change in post but, you know, people do. I mean, there. I don't see any reason why you can't change the vibe or the look of something in post as long as it falls within what you feel comfortable with and suits the style that you're trying to create. Just don't 
do it to the point that whoever you were photographing, I'm assuming portraits, or if you're photographing a product, that it distorts the original idea that you had, and then the client or the person that was working with you, your collaborators, aren't happy with the results, right? So I would keep that in mind. But as far as the, is that ever good enough to, or do you just keep retouching and stuff? I don't generally have that problem in post because I don't do much post. <laughs> Um, but I do have it on set, sure. I'm constantly tweaking my lights. I, I always say that you shoot until it gets good and then it gets better and then it gets better and then it gets bad, <laughs> right? And because that, that what I mean by that is that as you're creating, you're kind of constantly pushing what you're trying to do. You're changing it. You're adjusting. You're trying new things. Your, your d- direction is going. And then all of a sudden, you go from that really great shot you had to garbage <laughs> and you know, I've gone too far off course. I got it. And then you roll back. So like your last images you shoot of the day shouldn't be the best because that means you didn't push yourself hard enough. That's the way I look at it anyways. So that's kind of that question. Then he's talking a little bit about the idea of should you, uh, if you're doing other types of work that's very different than your commercial work, should you show that? Like how, how do you show that? What? In, in his case, he's saying he doesn't necessarily want to do it for money. What I would say is you don't need to show everything you do. You know, I have plenty of work that I don't show. One of the things I dislike a lot, and it was very trendy before, I don't know if people still do it, is they would have a section on their website and they'd call it personal work. To me, (laughs) all the work should be personal. Everything you show should be personal. That should be your portfolio. In fact, I would be more likely to have a portfolio section and then client work as a separate section. Uh, I don't know. The idea of that, like there's a separate section that's your personal work has just always been weird to me. But again, that's just me and it's phrasing and how you want to say it. I think that if you do something like that, you could do any number of things. It depends on your setup. I wouldn't necessarily put it on my main promotional website unless I wanted to do that kind of work because you might get asked to do it. Whether or not it would stop people from hiring you for what you were doing, it would kind of depend on what you were doing. If what you're doing is so different than your commercial work, it could turn people off. I don't, you know, if you like to shoot, let's say that you shoot weddings and then you discover you discover you like to shoot birds and you're out there shooting the birds in your front yard or you're going on safaris safaris for birds i don't know and i don't think your wedding clients are going to care that you have beautiful pictures of birds if on the other hand you're shooting you know school portraits like children's portraits and then you start shooting glamoury half naked men and women that might conflict in some people's mind and i could see that hurting that work so i would be weary in that sense but at the same time, if you're not looking to get that for commercial work, don't put it there. Show it other places. Maybe start a separate Instagram if, if you don't, or if you don't have an Instagram, start one there. Or if you don't already put a mixture of stuff on your Instagram, maybe start showing them in your stories on your Instagram to see how what kind of reactions you get. Maybe shop them around to galleries. I don't know what this other work is. He doesn't say what it is. If it's an art gallery appropriate, maybe shop it around there. Maybe start a separate profile somewhere. You can definitely do that. And we talked about this before. You don't want to spread yourself too thin with a million different places. But at the same time, if something is in direct conflict, don't do it. I dislike, and I've talked about this before, the idea of somebody who has like 50 categories on their website and each one has like three pictures in it. You see a lot of this. Take the body of work that best describes you and make that your main portfolio. Then you can have other sections. Like I said, maybe you'd have, like for a while I would do I would actually do a lot more of catalog stuff. I would have client work and I would have a link and it would show like catalogs. Basically because I was showing off, hey, I worked for clients and here's some catalogs. Not because the work was great. A catalog work is boring, right? It doesn't look great. If you shot, if you want to shoot catalogs, having a portfolio full of catalog pictures is not what you want to show. You want to show cool work that shows you're a great photographer. And then the, those are clients, right? So you can do it that way. But I prefer, again, my personal taste is a more simplified strong portfolio in your main marketing, which would probably be your website, and then Instagram, Twitter, Flickr, Tumblr, all these other social media sources can be where you can put things that are outside the norm. So that's what I would do anyways. I think this is a great topic. I would love to know what you guys do. You can uh, give me a call. If you check the show notes, you'll find a link to the Anchor app. You can call it and put your voice on the air. If you would prefer to send me a message on Discord, again, there's a link to the Discord in the show notes, I can read it uh, on the show. If you send it to me, send me a private message and say, read this on the show. Or you can jump into the chat room that's just the A Voice chat room and let's talk about the subject. Jump on over. Again, if you're not familiar with Discord, it's pretty simple. If you have any issues, 
check it out. A lot of people are joining. The photography crew is getting strong over there. So thanks, everyone. Also in the show notes, you're going to find a link to my Patreon. If you want to support the podcast, that's a great way to do it. But if you want to support it other ways, all you really have to do is rate the podcast wherever you listen to it and give it a review if you haven't done that yet. If you have, of course, share the podcast. In fact, you could do all of those things. Share it, rate it, review it, patron. All these things are available to you for a limited time. No, not for a limited time, obviously. (laughs) So yeah, check it out, guys. I will talk to you soon.